the first thing is the scenarios, which basically sets out the different paths that somebody could go down in the interview. Um, so if you're doing the housing TRO, for example, they could have been locked out. They could want to be let back in again. And that's the flow of the interview. Um, then you've got the test case itself, which sets out line by line the, the elements that are available on each page and how the tester is going to interact with those elements. Either they check the box or they put something in the input or they don't check the box, they don't put something in the input. Um, it's very rigorous. Um, and then the last bit is basically running the test through the test case. Um, the reason we want it, I mean, you guys have been informally testing as you code, right? That's something that you guys do. You run it, if it bugs out, then you know it needs to be fixed. So it should be pretty rigorous, but what we want to do is we want to have like test cases that we can replicate. We, another thing we want to test is we want to test that it's um, the PDF gets populated in the correct way. And what I mean by that is that it's um, the checkboxes that need to be checked are checked, that the right words are coming in the right places, um, and that it flows correctly through the interview. So the first step is the scenarios, right? The scenarios comprise of, this is what you guys are gonna be doing today or tomorrow, depending on when you guys finish your interview. You're gonna be writing out different options for the tester to go, go down, right? So if you imagine yourself as somebody who's taking the interview, these are what you're gonna basically go through. So this is an example from Mia and Benny and Jack Castor's interview. And the first thing they did is they actually create a test case template. Um, sorry, a test scenario. Um, and what this does is it tells you each screen. So this is the screen. And it tells you the different options that you could have, right? So this is the user's name. Um, the different options that we want to test are this one and this one. Same thing for um, other party type and name. Um, here, there's a lot more options, right? Because of these, because these are basic questions, we don't have to test them as rigorously unless you've replaced them in your interview. I think Fanola and Sinead have replaced basic questions. Is that correct? Yeah. So when you've replaced a basic question, where you've over, sorry, not replaced, when you've overridden a basic question, you're going to want to test it much more rigorously. Um, so here, for example, if you change the way you'd ask username, you would want to test first, middle, last suffix, first, middle, last, first, middle. You know, you want to test all the different options you could have. Um, the reason that we only have first, middle, last suffix and first and last is because once you've tested this one, you know that the interview, that the PDF populates every single one of those, right? Then you don't have to test it anymore. You can then from there on, just use this one, which is a lot quicker and easier. Um, so how they got these, well, these were the three options that they had, and they basically filled in what the different, you could have different permutations through that screen. And it just goes on like that. So these, this template basically sets out every single option you could have that you want to get tested. The next step is to create your inputs. Um, these are pretty standard. You can actually just copy and paste these from, I'm going to drop you this so that you can all have it. Um, these are standard. The reason that we chose these were because they are um, gender neutral ish <laughs> and they are short to type, um, especially when you're on your phone. Um, so that's, you can just use these as an example. They've done a really good job here. And these were ones that we've actually created in the previous test. The next step is to then create the test case template, sorry, the test case scenario. And the way that you do that is you basically copy this, this whole long thing, and then you delete whatever you don't want to test. So for example, say you want to test just having the other party as a person. You just delete those two, not on the template, but in the actual scenario. Um, so here you'll see, I'll just take you through some of these scenarios. Um, they've tested this once, but you'll see thereafter, they just test first, last, because they know that all of these populate in the PDF. Um, so basically, you're going to want to try and test these things once, right? The combinations don't really matter. 
the combinations per screen, sure. But you don't have to then test, you know, you, there's not going to be like infinite number of combinations that you have to try. So you see here, they've actually managed to test things within 10 tests. They've managed to test enough that they're confident that their interview is rigorous, right? So I don't know why I said rigorous. Is that the right word? <laughs> I don't know. Their interview is like stable. I think that could be the right one. Um, so the other thing that you want to test is that if you have a required field, you want to test that you can't go past that required field without putting some information in. So example of that would be here. You can't continue. So this should actually all be like, can't, does not, I'll change this before I send it to you guys. This should all be um, yes, no, no selection, can't continue, right? And because you can't continue, you actually don't need any of this. Does that make sense? Um, the reason for the white and gray is because each is a different screen. So that's just to set that out. Um, this one, this one is done also. You, you should just get to can't continue and you shouldn't be able to, everything else should be does not appear. Um, so before I send this to you guys, I'll, try, I'll just double check this and then um, you'll, guys have, you'll have a thing that's more, that's, that's correct. Um, you'll see here you've got the PDF. Um, so what you do for each scenario is you, if there is a PDF, if it's can't continue, it's not going to generate a PDF, right? Because you don't get to the end of the interview. So the interview stops and that's the end of the test. Where you do generate a PDF, you're going to actually want to generate that PDF. And you're not going to want to do it through the interview. You're going to want to do it on, you can do it on Reader. If you have Adobe Reader, you can do it on Acrobat if you have Acrobat. Um, you then fill in the information from the inputs as it would be per that scenario. And then you save that. Um, just a tip is don't sign it. Don't electronically sign it because you can't edit it then. So we only create one. And the one that we create is unsigned. Does that make sense to everybody? I can't actually see everybody. Wait. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. If it doesn't, then I'll. Sinead, I'm looking at you. So you're saying that we don't. We don't sign it because we have two signatures to kind of occur in our test. So, so the reason you don't sign it is because you only compare the PDF. You only compare one PDF, right? And when you sign the PDF. It, you can't edit the PDF anymore. So if you want, if you make a okay. mistake, it's just easier. I found because when I created these tests, these like the one that matches the scenario, it um, I don't know how to say this. It if you sign it, you make a mistake. You can't change it. So ultimately, okay. you'll see in the test you actually have a signed PDF and a preview PDF. But for mm -hmm. testing sakes, you just treat them both as the same. I'll explain that a little bit more uh, later. But okay. So this is the scenario, right? This is what you guys are going to be doing at some point today or tomorrow, depending on when you finish your interviews. Um, the next step, and this is what we're going to be talking about at two o'clock with the testing team, is to create the test case template. Okay. So this isn't something that you're going to be doing straight away, but I thought I might just give you um, an indication of what's going to happen here so that you can have a better idea of how your um, scenarios are going to be put into, into action. Um, so this is a test case. Um, you get one test case per scenario. So you see here, this is case one. So this will be case one. Um, you have a cover sheet, um, which has a whole bunch of information in. Um, this is for the tester to fill out. So you fill out all of this information and it's guided automatically generates your reference. Um, here you've got your test creators information. So if you're, so this will be you guys filling this in. Um, and then this is the person who reviews it. I don't know why this is above that, but maybe I'll change that, I don't know. <laughs> okay, then you've got this. So now this gives you information about how many elements were checked, how many you've completed, how many, didn't pass, so something went wrong with the interview, and then once you've resolved them, this number changes. So this is all automatically linked to the various pages throughout the test. There's going to be three main pages. The first is you're testing the interview. The second one is you're testing the PDF, 
let's get the preview PDF. And the third one is you're testing the signed PDF. Um, the signed and preview PDF should be the same, but it's important just to check it in case there's something wrong with the code. Um, so here's your interview, okay? Now this is gonna be something that you guys are actually gonna be writing out. So a lot of it is gonna be the same, so you can actually just copy and paste. So for example, the signing area, uh, you know where you get to nearly finished. I think mo some, most of you guys have got that, right? No? Maybe you have to add it. I don't know. Okay, well, you basically, you get, to the, you get to the end of the interview and it's like, do you want to review? When do you want to file these forms, right? That's, that's probably where it gets the same. Um, from here on down, that flow is going to largely be the same for everybody. So you could almost copy and paste this and put that in your interview. Um, the stuff before that is going to change depending on what your interview says. There's going to be certain screens that are going to be the same. So for example, your name here. This is going to be something that you guys are going to come up with, right? It's going to be an all your, you're always going to ask the person's name, right? So it's another thing that you might be able to copy and paste. So while this looks a bit daunting, it's not that bad because it, the precedent is going to be there. There's only going to be a few things that you're going to have to tweak. Um, and what happens with this test case template, you create one test case template and then you write a bunch of test cases from it. So the test case template basically is this, right? It's all of the possible scenarios incorporated into a template. It looks a little bit confusing to start, um, but it's not complicated and you get the hang of it really quickly you basically just do that and then it updates automatically we'll have another we'll have another longer call to just explain how that works because what we're doing now at two o'clock is we're just basically confirming how this is going to work so i don't want to take you through it yet and things might change but just so that you get the overall idea of how this is going to work um as i said a lot of the things are going to be the same you can copy and paste um, some of the things you're going to have to come up with yourself, like, for example, the screen is specific to the um, to housing TRO, um, and it might change for, your, for you guys. Basically, each of these is an element. Um, you've got the continue button, you've got the inputs, you've got the choices, and there's also a standardized language that goes along with this. So it's a lot easier than thinking up these things by yourself. You can just refer to the language guide. Um, create the test case template and then from there you create the test case um right this pdf we haven't really figured out a good way to do this um what we wanted to do was we wanted to have a comparison so you'd have the if, if your interview generated a pdf you use a tool like um diff checker or something like that where it actually you load your pdf that you generated through the interview and you load um, this expected outcomes PDF, uh, this one, and you basically compare those online and whatever is different will get flagged. Um, something that I also that I should have showed you is that, so you see how you've got your elements, you should say whether it appears or not. You've got what the tester has to do. If it's nothing, then it's just none. Then you've got what you expect to happen. Then you've got, if then as a tester, you will then fill in the rest, right? So as a tester, if you expected that the choice was going to get selected and it doesn't, you then say choice wasn't selected in this column. Um, and then here you've got a whole lot of check marks to say that you it's passed or not passed and that you've reported it. Um, you can put it in your marks. And then when you review it, you can then go resolved. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to explain to you. For now, it's just really important to create the scenarios for your, for your interview. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, Maeve, I have a quick question. Um, Sinead and I are working with DocX, so I'm wondering is anything different? The example here is PDF, so is anything right. different to the DocX? Question. I think that the interview part is going to be the same. So the scenarios will be the same and the interview part will be the same, but what will be different is the testing of the PDFs. Um, 
because obviously you guys generate a PDF at the end, right? You, so I'm wondering, I'll bring that up in the meeting today about how we're going to do that. So the input is a docx and the output is a PDF. And I know that I think Tyler and Mike are also on docx, right? Okay. So yeah, I'll make, I'll make sure to ask that and see, and see if anything's different, but from the scenario point of view, no, that'll be the same. Um, because that's the interview itself. It's just going to be when you're testing um, the output of the interview that it might change a little bit. All good? Okay. As I said, just message me on the channel if you don't know, if you get confused when you're actually doing it. Okay. I'll see you guys in a little bit.